Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. I'm actually here in, wait, where are we? Uh, this is near Merida in Birmingham, in the UK. Okay, what she said. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where I am. This is Phoebe, by the way. She's actually the wedding planner that I came here to help, and I'm gonna be her second hand today, which I'm really excited about, and I know you guys have been looking forward to this trip for a super long time. Um, and at the moment, we are actually outside the bride's home, where she gets ready, just to kind of check in on things, right? Yeah. Yeah, making sure everything is as it should be. Yeah, people are turning up, things, are, flowers are turning up. <laughs> yep, which is good because we already have the photographer here, videographer team just showed up, flowers just showed up, hair and makeup is happening, and then we have the church service at what time? 12. At 12, and right now it's just about 10 a.m. So we've got plenty of time um, to kill and just go watch people get their hair and makeup done. Yeah, and chat. <laughs> and chat, <laughs> because Phoebe and I have actually been in communication for 18, 18, 18. months. So this is the first, today is the first time I've ever seen her in person. So <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got a lot to catch up on. <laughs> we've got so much to catch up on. Um, so for now we just figured we'd say hey, start off the vlog, and then we'll talk to you guys probably in a little bit. Maybe I'll do some behind the scenes stuff. Just be a little creeper in the corner. <laughs> you know. You know how I do. Alright, well, we'll check with you guys soon. Oh, wait. Also, I know that I have a lot of UK followers on here, so if you guys are interested, um, Phoebe's company is... Uh, big Little Weddings. Okay. Big Little Weddings. I'm gonna put it in the description box down below if you guys are interested. Um, Cause I know you guys are always looking for recommendations for planners in your area and she's pretty rad. Like, I flew around the country to help her. <laughs> yeah. How's, how's that for pressure? Yeah, great. It's, it's great. <laughs> You're like, this feels good. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you for that. <laughs> all right, now after that, we're gonna go check in with everyone inside and we'll see you in a bit. Look at these flowers. They're all cute and packaged. I've never seen this before. I have to figure out who this florist is because this is really cute. Yeah. So this is actually the brides, or, yeah, bridesmaid bouquets. Look at these peonies. So cute. I don't even know what this is. Some Queen Anne's lace <sighs> and rosemary. Get out of here. And what's the name of the floral company? The Orangery. The Orangery. Of course. It's a super cute name too. Why would it not be? And then I just found out that apparently boutonnieres here are called buttonholes. <laughs> like they didn't even know what a boutonniere was and I didn't know what a buttonhole was. <laughs> These are so sweet. Okay, so we are super excited about the florals. The only thought that we have is there isn't a water source for them. And since it's not quite 10 in the morning and the service doesn't start till noon, and these also need to last all day. I mean, there's a bunch of really hardy varieties in here. But my only thought is the peonies. Um, I don't want them to open up so much in the warmth that they almost kind of end up falling apart. So I think we're either going to get some paper towels and just kind of wrap those up. Or maybe plop them in a glass of water just to keep them as fresh as possible. Just in case, you know? And then we have all of the buttonholes or boutonnieres as we call them. And my only thought with these is that hopefully because the ends aren't wrapped in floral tape, so like oftentimes when we see them, them, we want to plop them in some water. Are you kidding me with this? What up, is that the entrance? Yes. That's the door? This church is unreal. This is beautiful. This has got to be one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been in. Um, so right now we are we're about 25 minutes away from ceremony start time. We are not actually running the ceremony. We're just here to kind of keep an eye on things. Our biggest concern at the moment is that there's very limited parking on the venue property. Um, and so what we kind of want to do is we kind of want to get some, some of the current cars to scoot over a little bit to see if we can buy a little bit more room for the photographer and the videographer cars just so we can get them as close to the property as possible so they don't have to be running around looking for a spot to park and we can kind of still get everything started on time. It'll be interesting to see when guests arrive because obviously for us, the first guests usually arrive about 30 minutes in advance. And right now, we don't have too many people here yet and we're about 25-ish minutes until start time. So I'm actually at the back of the building right now. I'm just kind of trying to scope out to see if we can get some parking over here. Um, just a few extra spots. Luckily, the bride and her bridesmaids are all in a hired car service. So they're going to be driven here. So we don't have to worry about them finding a spot. But we do need photo and video to have a spot. So I think 
I think we've got some room over here. I think that should work. Oh, hey, just figured I'm gonna hide back here and walk. <laughs> just like away from everyone. Okay. Did we figure out who the cars are? No. Yeah, I think. There's like three people in there. Yeah. You have a bug on your chin. <laughs> just, just being here to help. That's the most stressful thing this happened to me all day. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this has been like a super, super chill day. Don't jinx, don't jinx it. I'm not, not jinxing it. I'm just saying. So far, so good. So the ceremony is still going on. Right now we're at least 10 minutes behind. Can you see me? At least 10 minutes behind, if not longer. So Phoebe's putting a call into the venue to let them know um, kind of what our time frame is, just so they can be aware for food temperature wise. Yeah, we were definitely anticipating an hour long ceremony and we've hit the hour mark and it looks like there's still a couple things left to do on the order of the ceremony that they have printed up. So I think they're offering all of the guests communion right now, which should take 10 minutes and there's a couple more songs a couple more things that needs to happen i think that's the latest update that i have for you it's definitely interesting being in like a an assisting role but phoebe's made it super super easy for me so uh, i'm gonna go check in with her and see how we're doing with catering and then i'll probably check with you guys a little bit because i think we're doing a confetti toss with all the guests oh that's right um, which is going to be a little bit of a bummer because right here is where the confetti toss is supposed to be happening and there's a bunch of cars here. Um, so obviously not visually ideal, but right now it currently is our only option. So we're just gonna do our best to like line guests up as much as possible so they cover the cars. Um, but the getaway car is right here. So we're gonna do the confetti, like toss getaway, and then they're gonna come back and get in their getaway car and then they're actually gonna leave. <laughs> this place was nice but this is this is freaking epic <laughs> it's really nice this isn't casual this is like a this manor. Is, <laughs> it's a manor weird Hampton Manor is like actually a manor yeah oh my gosh you guys I cannot wait to show you this it's this is not real <laughs> like we can't even fake this kind of stuff in California no no. You can't build this. No. I mean, we might not have sun in the sea, but we have this. You do have this. All right, you win in this department, though. running when we first got here um just because there's a couple things that need to be tended to but i think i have footage of me freaking out like of me losing my absolute mind because this is this is a bona fide manner people also guests are showing up right now and i'm out here yelling at a camera so right now basically our biggest concern is we are running behind and we want to make sure the photographer has enough time to do family photos and um photos with the bride and groom but we only have about 
20 minutes left until we start ushering guests into the reception space, um, which I'll show you guys in just a little bit. And then we have about 35 minutes until the bride and groom do their grand entrance. So that's not a whole lot of time. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is go check in with the photographer and make sure she has what she needs. Um, and then probably with the venue to make sure that we're good to start moving guests in. But we do have like just a few minutes of downtime. There's not a whole lot we can do because we can't help the photographer take photos, unfortunately. She is hustling and she's doing a great job. So I think for now we're just gonna go look busy because <laughs> that's what we do best. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll hit the next element of festivities and probably just a few. I don't want to get copyrighted because of the music in the background, but they actually have this telephone booth where you go in and you pick up the phone and you leave a voice message for the bride and groom. And then in order for them to use it, they have to dial their wedding date and it will play back some of the messages. How cool is this? Can I jump in there for a sec? Look at that. This is so brilliant. Okay, wait, hold on. Focus. So they have ideas on what you can say. You just pick up the phone to leave a message, and then this is the phone. Although they end up getting a different phone than this. This is so rad. Did, is this your company? Did you, you came up with an idea. How do you come up with an idea like this? I'm a product designer by my day. So yeah. this isn't my day job. This is brilliant. I'm just running outside to check in with you guys real fast. First of all, let's talk about how bright this is right now. Oh, I'll have to drop that. It's 6.15 and it feels like four in California, which is crazy just how bright it still is. In fact, because the schedule is so behind, um, hold on, a plane's going overhead. Because we ran a little bit more behind, the photographer wants to steal the couple to bring them out for more photos. And usually for us, like that would mean sunset photos, but here, because it's so far in the northern hemisphere, it's still so bright out and probably, like I don't think the sun sets until almost 10 p.m., which is throwing me off like crazy. Um, and there's been, it's so funny chatting with all these other vendors about how they structure their packages and like what the timeline normally looks like. We've, they had a three course meal um, and each meal came out plated separately. And then there was a gap between the main course and the dessert, and that's actually where the singing waiters were, which was such a cool experience. I don't, how, what? And then afterwards, they served dessert, 
and then everyone's just kind of been milling around. It's almost like there's this really slow, gentle pacing to the event, whereas for us, it's very clipped. Um, at least for the events that I've worked. Like we've been here for, golly, what is it? Over three hours? and we're just starting toast. So it's just so fascinating to me to see the difference between like what we typically do at the weddings that I work in Southern California and then what's happening here with this wedding here in the UK. Um, and talking with all the other vendors, this is super common. Just this low key, relaxed kind of style. A lot of the vendors were joking around that it's just an opportunity for people to drink, which I mean, that's what a lot of people view weddings as. But what I cannot get over is this property. I mean, it is, is so stunning but this to me feels like something out of a movie and to everyone who's here feels like normal life you know so i just can't believe that like this is this looks like something out of pride and prejudice how am i here right now phoebe's inside monitoring toasts so i figured i'd just duck on out here say hi to you guys and just show you a little bit more of the architecture of the building because there's a clock tower so why would there not be a clock like it's it's a veritable manor so here is the outside of the building. This is where we had cocktail hour that actually the bride and groom spent most of the time here, right over here taking photos. And then they had a singer that was here earlier. I'm sure you guys saw her. And then they did all of their bridal party photos down there and a couple of portraits. Um, but like I said, the photographer wants to steal them a little bit more. But look, I mean, just like, just stairs. Look at these stairs. Look at what? <sighs> Ivy, I cannot get this stuff to grow in my house, but here it grows like a weed. Sure, that's fair, thank you. Just these beautiful grounds, and I'm pretty sure like it extends out a little bit that way, so um, if they wanted to do more photos, they could. And here's the back side of the house. House, manor. These are kind of like waiting rooms, so to speak, with some couches and whatnot. I just can't get over that clock tower. In fact, I'm pretty sure I need to get a picture of it. Oh, and, and this is also like a, a bed and breakfast. So there are rooms that people can stay in here. So the bridal party, I think, is staying here. And they think the bride and groom are staying here. I mean, <laughs> this is so cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna snap some photos um, for the gram because I can. And then I'll show you what the inside of the property looks like because this is kind of like a tour, but kind of like a behind the scenes video because obviously I'm showing you the property, but I'm not doing as much as I normally would at a normal event because it's not mine. Um, and the style of wedding is very different. So I'll show you guys inside. Okay, so cocktail hour was out here and then you come up these beautiful steps. And there's the clock tower. Let's hope this is still unlocked. Definitely locked. Okay, so we're in the front of building because the party is happening in the I kind of want to call it an atrium, the room with the glass ceiling. So let's head over this way so we aren't chatting a bunch around people. Around a bunch of people. Oh my gosh, are there more stairs over there? Of course there are. Why would there not be? So reception's happening back on that side of the building. So like back behind all these. But here's the main entrance. But it's just like this maze to kind of get back through there, which is kind of cool. Um, but, or you could also walk around through the back. So here is one of the rooms. So there's a bar over there. And then look at even like the molding on the walls. This is... So that's where we just were the cocktail hour space back there. And then stairs upstairs to the rooms. And this is where I tried to get in, but I was locked. Look at these windows. Look at the detail. Here's like a dining hall of sorts. I'm assuming for the guests who stay here. These wallpapers. 
paper. Look at that. What the heck? That's beautiful. Oh, the ceilings. And more of the stained glass window up there. This is gonna turn into me nerding out over this property. That's what this is. Okay, so we just came from there. There's that sitting room, cocktail hour. The dining room's like over this area. And the entrance that I got locked out of is over there. Main entrance is over this way. And then if you head down this way, it'll actually take us to Elizabeth's court, which is where the wedding is being held. It's a little bit of this like zigzaggy thing, but I love the decor. I do know that Craig was my daughter with every bone in his body. The bond that you, you and Rosie have is so special and you have contributed so much to making her the woman she is today. You indeed are a very lucky man for having met my daughter, but equally she's very lucky having met you. So I've decided to auction these off as Craig won't need them anymore. <laughs> but who will give me a tenner for these? Oh, <laughs> Who give me 20? Who give me 30? Who give me 40? And when I was Jack's the best man, obviously he knew and I knew that he'd be in charge of organising the stag doing that sort of stuff. And Jack's a private school teacher, so I thought it wouldn't be a problem for him at all. You know, he deals with kids every day. Give him a 30 of my mates, will be a dollar for him. Okay, so wait, what time is it now? At 8 p.m. It's 8 p.m.? Um, which, first of all, let's talk about the light. Oh, I'm vlogging, by the way. I just like started and didn't say anything. Um, and they've actually flipped the space from the reception tables over into uh, getting ready for the dance space. Um, and a DJ's now come in and a band. So it's been really interesting to have the party kind of take this downtime uh, to get all that prep work done. So the, the tables were moved, the chairs were moved. We're missing one of the companies that's supposed to be here right now. And then the DJ and the band literally just showed up at like 7, 7.30. Um, so it's just such an interesting perspective to see it like this. Also, they have something, they have evening guests. So guests that don't come to the day of like the full day of the wedding and dinner, but only come at night for drinks and dancing. So, I'm just learning so much, you guys. <laughs> I'm learning so much.